Hey guys, welcome to another trip down a deep rabbit hole. Why is there a picture of a US $5 note here along with a very rare Colt lever action rifle? Why are these two things here? When this portrait of Babe Lincoln was being printed, the gentleman that was doing the portrait requested that a few photographs be taken so he could continue to flesh out the picture um, after Lincoln wasn't there doing like presidential things like running the country. Matthew Brady's uh, photographic outfit was contacted. Mr. Brady was not in town and the gentleman that came down and took this photograph and the pictures of Lincoln with his son Tad was none other than Andrew Burgess, the designer of this rifle. Down the rabbit hole, we're gonna go talk about how to dynamite apart a gun you've never seen before. How do you keep track of it? How do you get all the screws loose? What's involved in that? Because I'll guarantee you, this is gonna be a simultaneous voyage of discovery because I've never even seen one of these things. Let's dive. Colt Burgess. Okay, so Burgess made this thing, and there's a couple of things on it that I did a little bit of reading about this gun. While it is relatively rare, and it's very light, this gun only weighs in at like five pounds, and they did that by, if you took a, a milling cutter like this and just went that way, went that way on both sides, changed the outline of this, all the interior parts still work, but there is a lot of weight not on this. So I did a little bit of research. We found out that this does not belong to Geronimo or Lawrence of Arabia. So we're good there, but it's just rare in its own right. One of the things that I did about a week ago, you'll see that these screws are wet. I started, I started hosing this thing down with genuine grade A Mark I Mod Zero Angel Piss about a week ago. And I've been in trying to keep the oil off the wood but I've been in just touching these screw heads with just a little bit of oil. And the way you can aim the oil is you can come in with a screwdriver like this and you just put a little bit of it on the shaft. And when you roll it all the way down, you've got a little droplet of oil right off the end of that, right? So watch this here. I'm gonna to touch the screw head and you'll see what I'm talking about. Bang. You see the oil come on there? That's it. That's how you aim oil down in the cracks without having to use a tremendous amount of it. Um, and then that keeps the wood from getting punked up. There's a weak spot on this stock we're gonna look at. It's right here underneath my finger. That's because there's a lot of claptrap up inside that forehand to allow this to happen. That's all up in here. So it's a known weakness on this gun. Um, so step one to taking any of these things apart is to begin to lubricate everything you can get to inside. I've done the barrel band I did up here on the nose cap. And all of the external screws very slowly. When you work on automobiles, when you work on any other machinery, like on a steel mill, the first thing you do three days before the shutdown is go around and start spraying oil on everything to attempt to get it to penetrate. Um, the, uh, the time to oil down the, the bolts holding your exhaust headers onto your cylinder head or not while they're squeaking while you're snapping them off. We've got the bottom of a tang of a gun that looks like a Winchester. And by 1884, when this thing was designed and Mr. Burgess had been around a little bit, how to do the bottom metal on an 1884 or on any lever gun at that time had been pretty well established. So there's a couple of screws in here you can mess with and a couple of screws you distinctly do not mess with. So here we go. We have our wood sheathed carbon filled pointer device that screw right there everybody tries to take that screw out but that screw haven't even been in a gun i will guarantee you is hanging on to the ass end of the mainspring if you try to take this out there will be so much torque on it it will split it this way and it'll strip it rip the head off of it this screw is the strain screw that tensions the mainspring we leave that screw alone also this is probably just an alignment pin for the spring that's pushing backwards on this bad boy right here. I don't know that, but that's what I think it is. That leaves this screw. Now on the other side of the stock, 
the tang ends right where my finger is, right here. That's where the other screw is. So this screw is not this screw, which tells me that's probably a wood screw, not a machine screw. And we're about to find out. But this is the exact thought process that I go through for everything I take apart. There's this thought process that I understand what I'm doing all the time and I don't. Now this screwdriver is just too wide and just too thick to go into that screw head. This screwdriver tip fits. It doesn't bind on the edges. And we're gonna talk about screwdrivers here at length, but not right now. So I'll stick this in here, grab a, and just give it a little tap. Now this thing is narrow enough, it's not binding on the sides of the recess that the screw is in, and it's touching the slot all the way across. And then I'm just gonna walk my hand here, and this is not fighting me at all because you can see it's wet. Because if there was any rust binding it, it would have bound it, but this is coming out like a wood screw. And it sure as heck looks like one here. Yeah, that's a wood screw. Now, the way I've got the gun hung, the barrel is sticking out that way. So there is, you can see, we got a lot of relative motion already between the action and the wood. So you gotta be thinking about where the weight is on all this. And when we flip this gun over, the muzzle's going down that end. So now we're looking at the other screw sticking up on the other side of this thing. Again, we got it wet and we're looking for, now this comes out right down here underneath this lever. So we know that's gonna be a machine screw and we gotta worry about two ends of it. Everybody worries about the thread end, but these things get bound a lot by all this gack that's right here, all this rust and everything. And and this particular gun has not seen the south side of maintenance in a long time. So what we're gonna do now is make sure that there's nothing in the bottom of this slot. Especially when you get back here by the butt plate, there'll be rocks, there'll be pieces of detritus, and they will prevent the screwdriver blade from going all the way down inside. And that thing there went all the way down. Oop, we can see it there. I give this a little tap. And that little tap just seems to help break everything loose. Now we want to be in a vertical alignment and it, there's an optical illusion going on here with the camera. I'm touching, touch there, touch there. I'm in the bottom of this slot and now I'm applying a torque with my fingers. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of rolling the screwdriver bit like this up above it. I'm just squeezing my fingers in. All right. And that's actually coming around, believe it or not. And I got my finger on the bottom to make sure, because just this morning, I'm turning this, the bottom wasn't turning, and I wankered the head right off of one of those square nuts on a Reich's revolver. And you want to talk about must control fist of death. I've changed cam camera angles here because I'm right-handed and I got to get up underneath this. So the threads have come out of the bottom metal, but this is in there really well. The wood's got it trapped. I slid this back a little bit so that where the, where the wood butts in is free of the vise, but be careful how much tension you put on this vise so you don't squish stuff, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is take a punch, and I'm gonna run the punch up inside that hole down there, and I'm just gonna give this a little bit of light massage and just tap this out. Now, Bruno, you don't see his hand, but Bruno is preventing this piece of unobtainium wood from falling out here. And don't let it come out. I don't want it to come off yet, all right? All right. Screw's coming out here. We're investigating this. We see that there's rust all the way up the side of this thing. This oxide jacked into this hole. So as this corroded, it actually got larger than it was or than it would have been. It's just pure iron. So we needed to persuade it out. And we'll talk about fastener segregation later. And then we can just pop this off and take a look at what's going on inside of this. 
But we don't want to be in a huge hurry. Oh yeah, so we got our work cut out for us here. And this is why you take the stocks off of damn mill serves. We flipped over and repositioned now and we're looking at this screw head. And I'll tell you, from my angle, this screw head has been beat up pretty good. I'm beginning to figure out that this thing comes apart like a Winchester. So when you put the screw in here, there's some play in it. Let me get my hand out of the way. See how that rocks back and forth? That's not right. Because when that rocks back and forth, that means all of the force, of the, all the rotational force is being applied right there. And on the other side, it's being applied right there. And this is what jacks screw heads up. This screwdriver bit that I've selected is a little bit thicker and a little bit narrower and fits and, go, and you see it doesn't wiggle. So we're gonna try that. I'm just gonna give it a little tap and set it down in there like that. Again, we oiled all this stuff like a week ago. So, you know, I don't want this to fight us. I would prefer this if this gun just came apart because it's got other issues. Now this is a very, very long screw that goes through a lot of wood, it goes through a lot of metal and back through a lot of wood again. So I am tightening it and loosening it, tightening it and loosening it. And I'm just working it. Now I've got a tremendous amount of force down. I am pushing on this screwdriver in a downward direction hard and continuing to rotate, rotate while maintaining a lot of downward force. See, it just cammed out of the hole there on me because I removed the force. This screw slot's gonna have to be cleaned up just a little bit. Okay, see it did it again right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's out of the threads or not, but it sure feels like it. And the way you'll know that is when you're rotating it, you'll feel it click. Here we go, we're out now. And then we can come up the other side here with a punch and come up the other side here with a punch and we can just tap this out. This is an industrial carpet pad. It's a piece of felt. We have recently tried some other gear here in this shop for doing uh, pads on vices and I'm gonna do a separate video on what my outcome of that was. Anything involving magnets, just not too good, all right. See, and then that screw's starting to back out that side and you just lay your pinky on that like that. Because what'll happen in the middle here, you'll lose the head of that screw. This will take off in another direction and blow out the side of a stock somewhere. You muzzle loader guys know what I'm talking about. But what my pinky is doing is preventing me from doing this. After having retrieved the screw, we flipped this thing back over in the vise here. And getting this band to slide forward without marking anything up is a unique challenge. But all we want to do right now is start it moving. I don't want to pop it loose. That cross pin probably goes through a hole that's been drilled in between the barrel and this tube to keep the tube from moving back and forth. So the real reason for wanting to extract that screw is to be able to just get this loose. Then we'll get up to the nose cap. We'll take a look at the nose cap and that will let us pull the magazine tube and everything else off the bottom of this thing. And then we can go back and fight that dragon that's sitting back in the rear end of it. All right, so I put this pin in here and then grab a slightly heavier, you don't want to go all the way, you just want to go just into the threads and then I start bumping on it. You see it moving? That's it. We don't want to get it hooked in the, in the wood, but all we're doing is just getting that moving. There is a temptation to want to stick a screwdriver in here and start wedging on this and dear God, don't do that. There's a thick part of this web right here this comes up and it, 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 there's a thick part right here. And all we're going to do is just massage this very, very, very gently. And it will move if you massage it. Now it's cocking to one side. So you have to get to one side than the other. And this is at a place where it's actually moving now under finger persuasion. And you see all that oxide 
that's all over this wood that's going to have to get dealt with before this weapon gets put back together again. This is more than just a cleaning. We're, we're knocking this gun back about 100 years because it should never have been allowed to get in this condition for how significant it is. All right, we'll leave this here. We're going to reset and come on up to the nose cap because that's got to be next. One of the ways you can tell the super lightweight version of this gun is the fact that this barrel is significantly smaller than this magazine tube. This gun runs 4440 and the way they got rid of a lot of weight was they actually, they took the design margin out of the gun. They took the 200% safety margin out of the gun is what they did, which is all right, but I mean, all right. So this screw also goes through and as you can see, there is a lot of metal. So this screw spends a lot of time encased in its screw tunnel as it goes through there and it comes out the other side. So it's very important that we got a lot of angel piss on this. So again, we're gonna try, notice we haven't used any heat yet. Heat is where we go if stuff starts fighting us. And I did not take this gun apart before and we got lucky. And again, I started oil and stuff a good week. Now, Croil, you gotta watch. Don't just dunk this thing in a can of Croil because it will take bluing off. Oh boy, that ship already sailed, gee many. All right, so let's see if we can get this. This screw slot's a little rough, but the screwdriver fits. We'll go back and clean all these up, cut these slots appropriately, and do all the maintenance on this thing that hasn't been done since probably, I don't know, 1884? because I'm not seeing any evidence that anybody else has been in here before me yet. All right, Let me take that out now. I can feel it, watch it. You'll see it bump back in the hole, watch. Right, see, jump in, right, there. What that's doing now, that's the end of the thread popping back down. So we know we're not engaged in the threads anymore. And we can sneak in back here with a smaller diameter punch with a smaller diameter punch we'll pop this out and there we go boy you want to talk about a small ass set of threads okay those threads are that's less than a 440 so that that's a really small really hard to make really hard to get in charleston on a friday afternoon screw and then this is all now relative to to it, itself and this will now slide off the muzzle showing let's see if i can get if i can get you to see it here there's a notch right there see that notch there that's the notch that that pin went through and what that does is that keeps this tube from moving relative to the barrel so it does that in two places but now the fun begins I'd be willing to bet you this muzzle cap hasn't been off in forever. Now there's three or four different ways these muzzle caps are done. Usually they're just shoved in and there's a screw that comes all the way up. There's a screw that comes part of the way in or this cross pin takes care of it. In our particular case, it feels like it's getting, it feels like it's, uh, we got a box of snakes here also because there is a pretty good magazine spring behind that. Let me get a little wider screwdriver here. The, the magazine tube spring is in here. Let's see here. No. So this almost feels like there's something. Yeah, there sure as hell is. Look at that. I'll bet you that there's another screw on the bottom of this. Well, some buck. Look at that right there. Well, that would be why it didn't come off. Because there's another screw right there. So let's see if we're going to get lucky. Yeah, we're gonna get lucky here and we'll be able to back that screw out. All right, we'll be able to back that screw out. And now that is the box of snake screw because there is definitely a spring attempting to uh, escape its confinement there. Maybe the follower will come with it. Spring, 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 more spring, okay. There's some good news here and not a whole lot of bad news. A little bit of corrosion right there. You see that orange right there. 
Those nicks right there are what kill these springs. So before we send this gun out, we will replace this spring. Oh my God, it's not the original collectible 1884 spring. Yeah, guess what? These springs are consumables. So I'm walking down and I'm looking and I'm seeing a lot of orange right there, right in between my fingertips. And what that'll do is induce a stress riser. A spring is a torsion bar. When you push down on a helical spring, if you look right here, that is actually winding up in torsion and it does it all the way around. Everywhere you look right at this edge right here, it winds up in torsion. So when you cut one of these things shorter, it gets stiffer, not lighter. This brings us back now to the fact that we can, we're lucky. A lot of times this will all be fused together, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna sit here with my fingers. I'm gonna roll this tube. This mag tube is hard into this piece of wood. So this will go away. Let's see here if I can get this off. All right, that's gonna come off the end and that's just gonna come out. And it will not, now will it go over the front sight? No, it won't. It won't go over the front sight. So we're just gonna very gingerly remove this. Okay, and then I was able to pull the magazine tube out. But this, if we look down in here, you can see all the rust. This is oxide jacked like crazy. Now what I don't want to do is put oil in here and get this wood all yacked up. Remember now the difference between a finish that's supposed to oxidize, polymerize, and, and lubricant, which is not. We do not want to put a lubricant in here and get the, get the stock wet because then we're going to have to remove that lubricant before we can finish it. We might be able to persuade this out, but I'm going to show you how to hang on to this in a vise and give you something to work with and not ruin anything. So we're going to redo a camera reset and then we'll talk about why this forend is potentially weak because this mechanism here for the loading gate had to be removed. All that wood had to be cut out of the inside of this. And this is one of the Burgess's weaknesses. And you'll actually find these stocks with this whole chunk of wood missing. You can see the slot there and see the light through it. And then you can actually see where it's begun to separate. Right there, there's a line right there where it's begun to separate. So we will stabilize this. And this is one of those times when I'm gonna just use a little bit of acro glass in a way that no one's gonna see it and stabilize this because this is a rare chunk of walnut. So let me get up on a vise here and show you how you get this apart and not kill yourself. This magazine tube is actually very fragile. They're rolled like a cigar. And let me get this around so you can see the little slice of light through it. Hang on, was that it? This seam right here is not welded. It's not soldered. This is just rolled. Winchester actually went down south and talked to uh, cigar rollers on how to make these things. It wasn't friction welded, it wasn't spot welded, it wasn't anything. So if you crush this tube, you're done. So the trick to hanging onto this in a vise so that we can pull this apart is to get, go find a drill bit, go find something. This happened to be 9 16 of an inch. It happens to be a milling bit. But I'm going to stick the rear end of this down inside this tube. And what this is going to do is act as a mandrel. And it's going to allow me to come up inside this vise and we're going to step on this and then we're going to move the camera but I'm going to come up now and just grab this these are soft jaws now these are not steel jaws these are aluminum jaws but it's going to allow you to grab this and immobilize this thing come on down to the end here yeah okay so now that that end of the tube is immobilized we can very very gently begin to rotate this and the vise is doing all the work of hanging on to it and we can roll this down and watch you don't squeeze this or you'll pop it like a freaking grape and we need that like we need a hole in the head so again I'm working in a really bad position here all right bang there we go now we're off the tube and you can see what the problem was more oxide jacking so we need to get all this oxide off. Now this thing will just slip right back together again. But then we got to deal with what's going on inside this chunk of wood. This chunk of wood is going to be its own separate piece of this salvation here. But the big one is, is that when you go to squeeze on one of these tubes, you got to have something of the tube's diameter inside of it. 
to take the squeezing load so you don't eggshell it. This applies to four ends. It applies to like whenever I checker one of these, you see I've always got a uh, I've always got a, a mandrel stuck up on the inside of it because if you're looking, here's the true weakness. How thick? Hang on a minute here. There we go. How thick is that piece of wood? That's it. That's all you got. This thing is been cut through. Let me get the light right. That's been cut through in a notch. Let me get the blue behind it. There it is. There's the view I want to see. There's a notch down it. This entire piece of wood's integrity is based upon the fact that there's a tube in it and that it's wrapped around the barrel. So when you get this out, this is like a Kentucky long rifle stock. This piece of wood is an incredible peril and must be handled like eggshells. If we drop it on the floor, we'll crack it. The entire time we're taking this apart, especially on an unknown gun, I'm laying this out kind of in the order it came apart in. You guys have seen some of these photographs I take of a complete teardown. I'm laying this all out. I've got all the, uh, the, the muzzle here, the cap here, all the screws that went in it. Now, eventually, once I know what I got and I take enough pictures of this, this will all be just, the, all the screws will get done at once, all the metal will get done at once. Um, but this at least lets you know where everything goes. And of course, my cigar goes right here. You got it, Bruno? That's awesome. Okay. So the next thing that came back out, this was the follower that was actually rusted up inside this thing. And that just kind of fell out. So we'll stick that over there on our lay down. So now that leaves us with this screw and this hanger right here has to come off because the way this thing works, and believe it or not, some of this is for my own edification, this loading gate slides in. So there was a tremendous amount of, of, of wood that had to be removed from that foreign in order to get this. This spring, boy, I bet you'd have a hard time finding that spring. Anyway, we'll roll this up like this. Again, we're getting a screw that a screwdriver that fits. I give it just a little tap, and I don't know if that tap does anything, but boy, it sure makes me feel better. Hang on, let me get the light right. I'm reaching right in front of it here. Here we go. All right. Okay, again, because we had everything wet, we are getting lucky. All right, and I was hoping I wasn't going to have to show you guys how to drill one of these. But let's say, for instance, that that screw fought us. I have a soldering iron in the shop. It's actually got its end modified on it. See that little chisel tip on it right there? So this is just some cheesy old Radio Shack thing. We're not even gonna plug it in, but if it was fighting us, we would let, get, let this soldering iron get nice and hot. And then we would set that in the screw head right there and hang on to it and let it get just the screw head good and hot. We're not in here with a torch getting everything hot. And then while we're at it, you could be dipping the screwdriver in some oil like that, and you'd get a puddle of orange ooze that would come out of it. And what this does is makes the screw stretch a little bit. It gets just a little bit longer, and it may be the advantage that you were looking for. Anyway, we don't need to do that here. We'll just go ahead and pull the screw the rest of the way out. It's not a very deep screw. You can see that it's, okay. Let's see if I can get my fingernails up underneath it. Okay, parts are shedding everywhere. Screws are hitting the floor. All right, so this is the support stanchion. You see, and this bad boy is, is hurting. The whole inside of the gun's gonna look like this. And if you look, you can see the grain of the rust. There's actually three dimensions to this grain. This isn't just something that turned brown over time. This is uh, active rust that's destroying this. Now, one of the interesting things about active rust that's destroying something, let's put a little bit of this coil on it. Rub this down and then wipe it off on a rag and it begins to get this beautiful purple look to it. This is how you brown a gun. Uh, this is how you brown a muzzleloader, but most of you collector guys would just call that patina. Spring comes off, loading gate pops out, and now the inside of this thing is beginning to reveal its mysteries here. 
Again, I've never been inside of a Burgess design gun ever. Um, we've got three Whitney Armory Kennedys sitting in here and one of which we're going to rebarrel and that should be an experience because I've never been down inside a Kennedy either. All right, so that's off. Put that over on the mat in the right place. So now I'm kind of looking at, let me reposition here. I'm gonna roll up. And I'm looking at, unlike a Winchester, this line, you can see the line right there and it rolls up over the top and it rolls down and it comes all the way down to here, cuts across and goes back up. Again, I have been oiling this and allowing capillary action. I've been allowing capillary action to grab this oil and just spread it along these joints. I've been doing this now for a week because I didn't want this to fight me. And that little bit of oil will pop down in there and we can actually see some relative motion back here. It didn't show up on camera with a hoot, trust me. But what it tells me is, is that in order to get this piece of bottom metal off, we're gonna have to deal with this lever. That cross pin, that cross pin is gonna have to come out and all this is gonna have to come out the bottom in order for the hammer, mainspring, whatever cassette to slide to the rear. So that's what I'm talking about. You have to look at what's in front of you. A normal, like a 94 or a 92 Winchester, this stops back here and this screw is just hanging on to the, it's the, um, the hammer pivot pin, not here. And I haven't, I've looked up the patent drawings on this thing. I don't have a real good idea how this comes apart. So from here on out, I think there's a, yeah, it does. It has the hole. So there is a pin somewhere up inside that has to be driven out. Is there another hole on the other side? Okay, just like a Winchester in this regard, this is the escape hole that the pin that hooks the lever to the bolt drives through. So in a Winchester design, if you have the lever all the way down, it'll compress the extractor and will allow you to tear all that apart. So that tells me the very next screw we gotta go after is that bad boy right there. We'll give her one more shot of oil here. We'll just throw a little bit of oil. Now, we don't have to be this careful with the oil anymore because we've got all the wood off the gun. And the wood is the absolute lowest common denominator here. So this is just a plug. We'll get that to fit in there. We'll drive that. Again, my hands are in front of you. Sorry about that. And I'm just milking the screwdriver with my with my fingers like this. I'm just milking the screwdriver around like that. All right. You get a tremendous amount of torque on it. All right. Turn that. And you hear it popping? Right there. That tells me it's all the way out. This is just a cap screw. Boy, good luck making that. You see the threads, it's not very thick. That goes over in about that position right there. And then we can look through here. All right. So actually, we're at a great camera angle to see this. We're at a great angle to see this. There is a, see that big old pin showing up? Right there, inside that hole. And it goes by when the lever's all the way down. So the takedown position on this bad boy is going to be right there. And we should be able to put a uh, pin punch up in the back end of that. And that's the pin that holds it all together. All right. That's the order I think it's got to go in. You have to have the ability to separate this and i think then the next thing to do is going to be to drop this pin out and pull the lever out the bottom okay so let's roll around and get on that now meanwhile while we're doing all this there's a tremendous amount of energy stored in this spring back here i don't even like cocking guns in this position because you don't know when that spring 
is going to hit one of those rust pits, have enough of a riser, and bink, and then I'm making a new spring. I would really rather not have to do that. And also, don't dry fire these old guns. This energy's got to have somewhere to go. We'll just select half cock and leave that alone. Um, again, we're just going to throw a little bit more oil on it. I've been doing this all week. Just oil everything you can see. Okay, let's see. There's a screwdriver I want to use. Now I'm going to put my finger back here. Because what I'm afraid of is that that's got like a spline on the back of it. And this threads into the inside of it. So I really don't know what I'm fighting here. And yeah, we got lucky. Now, that pin's going to have to come out, right? So you bring this screw back down and you bring it up about a half a turn at a time and you take the screwdriver bit out of the screwdriver and you just pop it. Now let's see if we can see the head come down here. Let me get it lit. This will start to come out just a little bit and then a half a turn. Now you can hear the tone as that other pin on the other side starts moving. You can listen to the tone of the screwdriver. I'll get the mic up real close. Now listen. Did you hear it? Pop, 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 pap, pap, pap. All right, and that's what we're looking for. Now the reason why only half a turn at a time is we don't want to buttress the threads. You don't want to only have this in it about a half a turn, hit it, and then you screw the screw up. So what you're doing is just slowly but surely, and now I don't even have to hit it. Now it's just coming out. Okay, so now as I turn it, it's just coming out, all right? So now, let me get, I'll just let me do this and I'll get my hands out of the way. We get that screw and we take it out like that. And then that's got a great big old pivot pin in there. And I believe I should be able to just drive that out. Now we got this monster and this was screwed into it. So there was absolutely no surface area here for Russ to get on and just tie this thing up solid. Absolutely no space. All right, so then this, again, I do not know. I have not seen a decent photograph of this. This should just fall out the bottom of the gun. It is a toggle link action. So as this comes up, that breaks and it hauls the bolt to the rear. And then when it comes up, that locks down so what that's doing is taking bolt thrust backwards down through this link which goes over center when you lock it and all of the bolt thrust and, and recoil energy is coming back into this gun through that pin and that's why it's so damn big it almost looks like it come out of a rolling block okay so if i move this we can actually see the oil starting to squeak out up here so now the next question becomes is do we take that screw out and will this move? And I think that screw is going to have to come out. So again, you now that's the wrong size bit. We're going to need a smaller bit for this. Um, Where did we go here? Yeah, there it is. So again, now I'm in with a bit that's as wide as the slot and as deep as the slot. I'm just going to tap that in right there. And then we'll uh, just come on in here and and again, you want to make sure that you're using the right size screwdriver bit. So now we got to flip this over and uh, pop that out. Oops. We may need to get rid of that front sight too. That front sight is beginning to get in our way. And we can hear it going over. That was funny once, but it won't be funny again. We don't want to launch this screw. Okay, so you saw the entire trigger group move to the rear because this spring shoved it there. So that'll come out. And then you don't just jerk this punch out because right now you don't know if this punch is capturing any spring energy. But this, this, this isn't loaded up, but let's say it was. 
this would warn you. So we can pull that out, and I'd be willing to bet you that this entire cassette just pops out. And that's certainly what it looks like. Uh, we're going to have to roll this over. So the hammer has to have been down, and the hammer has to come through the aperture this way. Now, I don't know what this is. We took a picture of this, but boy, it sure as hell looks like something that was made as a spring. It's tempered as a spring. And it was shoved up inside this housing for God only knows why, but I did take a photograph of it before we took it apart. So we're just gonna set this down as exhibit A and hope to God it's not that important. So this, the hammer, hammer will come up through the aperture there and bang, we now have the lifter, the hammer, the mainspring, and I gotta tell you, that was a lot easier to do than a Winchester. All right, I did a slight move here of interesting note. There is a screw, focus on the end of this screwdriver for me, will you, bud? Right there. There's a screw right there, and there's a spring in here. That maybe? I don't know. We're going to have to find out when we get that screw out of that hole. Now, because that screw is blind, it does not stick through the back. It had not been the benefactor of an oiling. So we'll go after that a little bit later. But I'll tell you, that's starting to look like a, a lifter screw. No, the lifter's down there. All right. I don't know. That's the bolt coming out. So the bolt came out. Right, and it's pretty jacked up, but up inside of it is a winter wonderland of garbage. Most guns, the sights come in from the right and out to the right. So I put a lot of uh, a lot of penetrant on the screw that was in here. Pop the screw out and drop this over. All right, and there's still a little vestigial remains of the original finish on this thing, and this gun looked like. It looked like that when it was new, and it, it's, that's not even showing up in the camera well, but this thing was gorgeous when it was new. It was well done. It was finished like a Colt. All right, the bore, we're, we pretty much got this frame torn all the way down. We've got it all the way apart. The front sight's not coming off. The front sight's brazed on the barrel because this was the super lightweight version of this thing, so that does not come off. That's where it helps to do a little bit of research before you get into these things. This is not bluing. This is some sort of black paint. Uh, the bore, like I said, is jet black. I have no way to show you that, but we're going to convert it once. We're going to boil it and thaw it for three or four hours, and we're going to see if we can't pull some stuff out. I would really like to shoot this, but if you look in that chamber there, let me see if I can get the camera to catch this. If, right there, if you look in that chamber, the inside of that chamber is pretty scrody, man. So I don't know. I know this gun's chambered in 4440 because they never made them in anything else. Before we drive this hollow takedown pin out, and that's the, the axle, this is an epic spring. So we want to get the weight off of this spring before we knock that out so we don't go sideways with it. Um, and you're starting to get some feel for just how jacked up this gun was. So we noticed a few things here when we cut away. One of which is there's an actual coil spring up inside this bad boy. Pushing down on that little cross pin. So we'll knock that out. Now we know that there's going to be a, a spring going to push this out. And um, I re-oiled this. But let me show you one more thing while we're still in here. We have yet to figure out what that, that was that screw. We popped that out and got that spring out. And it's pretty obvious that that spring is riding on the bottom of the slide here. You can actually see the wear mark right there. It's shining right at you. So I don't know what that was doing other than pushing up on a bolt. But the other thing we noticed is on the bottom metal here, down inside, there is a a spring mortise in here. I'm going to see if I can't get you to see it. Hold on. There it is. There's a hole right there. You can see the lollipop for the end of it and a spring that's supposed to be laying down 
and then there is a pin that captures it that it goes under and that spring looks like it actually holds the bolt when it's open and it looks stunningly like this spring so one of these is missing we'll have to make one of these because i'm sure you're just not going to go find one we'll make one of these and then this one i think lost its temper and you can see where it's bent see how it's got that little jig in it right there at the end i think that this lost its temper and it didn't work and somebody shoved another piece of steel up in there to try to help it work i don't know yet while this thing's converting i'm going to find out an awful lot about how it works lay all these parts out and try to figure out why because generally when you manufacture something you don't put anything in it that you're not going to use so now we're going to pull that screw right there and i got to find the screwdriver bit i was using i don't know what happened here we're gonna have to reset this bench because i'm starting to lose my way less hang on we'll come back in a minute all right this screwdriver bit is almost exactly perfect for this screw except for the fact that it's well it's not too wide there's a little bit of side to side slop here but if it had filled the slot all the way up and this is a cone shaped mortise this would drive in and drag on it i brought that up before but what we'll do here is we'll see if we're going to get lucky pulling this gigantic screw out. No, that sucker's in there tight. Okay, so that leads me to another little trick. We have here an English slash metric um, crescent hammer that's really good. It works on metric stuff. It works on English stuff. I've heard it called a lot of things. A Tijuana socket set. You can call it what the hell you want to call it. But there is a square stud on this screw. And hang on, I'll get, my, I'll get my hands out of the way here. We can use this setup here, drop this screwdriver down on top of it for vertical load, and actually use this to have a little bit more leverage and bump it. And there we go, we got away with it. All right. So let me undo this whole stack here. So we were able to knock that out. Now this screw, the head on this screw has been beat up. So yes, this gun's been taken apart, just not recently. You can see how, how galled up all that is. We'll take care of that. I didn't even attempt to break this strain screw because I don't think the strain screw has come out of that hole in years. So we'll get, we'll get Croil on it from the bottom after we get this mainspring out. The mainspring just fell on the floor and the uh, the bruno animal has just retrieved it and see all this all this rust on a spring that introduces point defects where this spring might break and this is a pretty thick spring it's properly tapered it's well made but that taper goes away in the bottom of these pits and it's only a matter of time until those come out here Let's see if we can get after this. It's, had, it's been beat down a little bit. Oh, it did come out. So what that does, when you have the main, oh boy, there's gack everywhere in here, huh? This was the spring that, the screw that held in the main spring. And then that spring, that screw there, as you put it in, pushes up on the bottom of the main spring and tensions it. You can turn the weight up and down. Usually most people never even mess with this thing. They don't even know what it's there for. We found out what that little shiny button was. That little shiny button was the screw that was mud catting underneath the main. So we can just go ahead and get that wet and let that soak while we turn our attention to this thing. So this, now that we've got all the weight off of it, the only weight that's on it is that spring back there you see the oil moving on the trigger so we should be able to just take a relatively sharp edged chisel and i'm actually going to turn this chisel around backwards and i'm going to sit on that hole like this and i'm just going to get it moving 
Okay, it's not going to fight us. All right. Now we'll get to a point where it'll just come out. Yeah, no rust there, no rust there. But important point, this is a hardened steel part. Let me get the blue behind it. And the edges on these two, on the safe, the half cock notch has still got its edge on it. And the, um, the full cock notch is still sharp. Let me get that blue rag behind it. You can see it right there. So that's still got a sharp edge on it. That's important to know. And then this is the lifter and that just lifts off. So the, the cartridges come down, are picked up and shoved up in the barrel. Uh, let's see here if we can get after this screw or not. Nope, I need something a lot wider and a lot thinner. Okay. Again, you'll notice we're not in a great big hurry here. We're not trying to set some kind of land speed record. We're just chuffing our way through it. Put a little bit of pop on it. This should not fight us, and it didn't. Okay. Now... This screw has not been out in the world. And look at the color of that screw. Every freaking fastener on this gun looked like that when it was new. This has just been hidden from all the gack. Yeah, buddy, and you can bet your sweet ass every single one of them is going to look like it when I get done. The rest of this is just incrementals here. We'll pop it all off. All right, so when I develop a plan about what the hell we're going to do here, we'll be back. Ah. So the very first thing I did when we started converting this gun was making sure if we could see the bore, and there is actually a bore in this thing. It took a lot of scrubbing, but we were actually able to get down to the bottom of continuous rifling all the way to the front and a decent chamber. Once we figured out this gun had a bore and all the parts are there, then we're going, yeah, now we think we can shoot this thing. And my level of give a crap for this gun escalated exponentially. When you get to the end of one of these conversion processes, you may not have anything. This particular gun had been scrubbed down white. Um, it had rusted, it had done a lot of things. We did um, a lot of rust removal, and, and it took us about four days to get from where we were to where we are, and I don't have Bruno over here for the whole thing. Take, for instance, this bottom metal right here. This bottom metal, this is the original bluing on it right here. So the original blue on the side, and then I put the rusting solution only on the bottom. So I didn't come all the way back, but I knocked all that nasty looking silver off with no chemicals on the bottom here. And we scrubbed all the dirt off of it. So we were able to bring it back to about 1920. I wanted to bring it back till it was about 40 years old. To go any further back would make this gun look contrived and scrubbed on, and that wasn't what I was trying to do. I'm trying to put it back to where it was if we had actually done the maintenance. So the Colt Burgess, beautiful gun. We did uh, a lot of work on this thing in order to kind of bring it back from a rusted, nasty mess. We weren't the ones that made the decision to screw this gun up. This particular gun was uh, screwed up by somebody other than us. It's a little persnickety about how you load it. I don't know, maybe the followers hooked up in it. Did we put one in the chamber? We didn't get one in the chamber and Okay, so we're not, there's something not working. Oh, that had to go up there. Okay. We didn't want to find this out inside the shop because you wind up uh, putting a hole in the wall. I've got some things I've still got to work on on this. Ejection sequence is a little off. The feeding sequence is a little off. It's dropping the carrier too soon. Yeah, it's dropping the carrier too soon. Now, there's still some work that's gotta be done on this particular gun. And now I think we know why it got abandoned because we've done all of this work to get back to a point where we have an alibi. I basically single loaded it. 
Um, the last time I looked, this thing wasn't as sharp. It's a Colt Burgess. So let's get back in the shop and figure out why we can't rock this thing. While we were running it, we identified three problems. The obvious feeding problem, there was an extraction and ejection issue, and there was an intermediate problem where I noted that the carrier was falling. Let's go to the, from the easy to the hard. Remember that little spring? We didn't know what it did. We were wondering why it was pushing up on the bolt. Because it was upside down. It should have been pushing on a little slot in the back of the carrier. So that's the first thing that got fixed. The ejection problem was what I thought was a firing pin liner, and I should have known better, is actually the ejector is annular around the firing pin. So the V-spring in this shot is engaging in a small slot and pushing forward. This thing had all been rusted in the slag, broke it all loose, got it running, and it now works as you're about to see. The third problem was there's a missing part and I went looking all over for a picture of the inside of a Burgess and I never found one. Well, apparently a long time ago, Uberti repopped this gun for a very short period of time and thank God there was a spare parts drawing. On that spare parts drawing, I blew it up and there was a fuzzy, nasty outline of the piece that kind of, all right, so what we're missing is something that intercepts the cartridge as the, as the lifter rises. And what gets it out of the way? A lot of reverse engineering later, we figured out that when you bring the uh, finger lever all the way to the top, it allows the next round to go by. And that spits onto the carrier. The projection on the front of the bolt keeps it from going all the way to the rear until you open the action again. The round follows, but this piece is already popped back up, intercepts the next cartridge, and you shuck it. And that looks something like this. That's better. Now cue the sonorous exit music. 